morning. I'm Monty at the Extension Community Art Center in Whitley County, and I'm here today to give you a tutorial on how to make our beautiful heart tie-dye t-shirts. As you can see, I've got a couple behind me. I've got a, a women's extra large, and then I've got a child size, and then I'm wearing my tie-dye heart t-shirt, which I love. Um, and we're going to go step by step um, with this video, so it'll be a little bit longer than the ones I've done before. But tie-dye is so much fun. It, the tying process can be a little tricky when you first start, um, but there's so many different ways that you can tie tie-dye t-shirts and so many different items you can tie-dye. So we're going to start today with just the white t-shirt, and you'll end up with a tie-dye like these behind you um, or mine. And um, you'll have a great time, so let's get started. Alrighty, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you the packet and I'm going to show you what's included. Um, when you pick up your packet, we are doing it a little bit different this time. Um, we've been doing take-home packets since May and we've given out over 2,000, which is amazing. Um, we're actually going to do sign-ups for this one. This was a little bit of a more involved project and we'll have a couple more projects coming up like that that you have to sign up for. Um, most of our packets are free. Um, we may have some that you do have to uh, pay a little bit for just because the supplies are um, kind of expensive on a few of the things we're going to be doing. Uh, but we'll try to keep it free or minimal cost for all the things that we do at Extension, like always. Um, but let me show you what's in the package. You're going to get the instruction guide. Then I'm going to go through step by step. You will get a baggie. You could also use a Walmart bag or Kroger bag if, you know, you're doing extra and you don't have an extra baggie. This will just be to store your bag, your uh, shirt for 24 hours so it uh, has time to absorb into the um, fabric. You will get a bottle of red and pink dye. Um, actually, the dye is in the bottom of both of these already, so we'll just be adding water to it and shaking it up, and these will be our bottles for dyeing. This will do one t-shirt um, from a child size to the adult extra large. It really won't do anything more than that. Um, and I'll give you some ideas on what to do if you're gonna be doing um, a larger size or gonna be doing a whole family um, on how we can make that happen, okay? You're gonna get several rubber bands, a set of gloves that I promise you, you will need, <laughs> wear them, <laughs> wear them. Or it's kind of like Easter when we dye Easter eggs and then our hands are covered. Well, this is a little bit worse. <laughs> and I also would suggest um, old clothes or an apron. You'll see me in a second, I'll be putting on my apron. Um, I had it all over my arms yesterday, even with wearing an apron. Um, and you will also receive a little tub of soda ash. Okay, and I'm gonna tell you what these things are for. We're gonna go to the first page of our uh, instruction packet where it says supply list and what you have included, okay? So you've already seen, you've got the bottle of the red and pink dye. I gave the brand that I bought uh, from Amazon. Um, you don't have to use that brand. You can also use Rit Dye from Walmart or Joann's. It does a fabulous job. This is liquid in this bottle where these are powder, um, but it gives you the um, exact recipe on how you mix this up on the bottle. And this is a suggestion if you're doing a lot of shirts, um, run to Walmart or Joann's and pick you up a bottle of red and pink, or you may have, want to do blue and gray. You may have other colors you want to do yours in. Uh, but this is um, a great way when you run out of this, okay, to pick these up. And they're not expensive, not expensive at all. Um, you also have the soda ash. The soda ash is what we're going to use in the beginning to soak our t-shirt in before we do any dyeing. And this helps to um, set the t-shirt for dyeing, and it helps to hold the color. Um, after we've rinsed and everything at the end. So it's, it's important, it's not necessary. I've died many times in the past without it. Um, it, is, it is just, it really does help, okay? Um, so that's what you've got in your bag. And at, like I was saying, at the bottom of our list, okay, we've got important information, what you will need, okay? So you're gonna need a white, 100% cotton T-shirt. Um, it just does not work the same if you don't have 100% cotton. So try to find that if you can. And lots of times you can buy like packs of three um, at Dollar General and Walmart. I would wear old clothes or an apron. You're gonna need a washable marker to draw your heart pattern with, OK? 
okay? Um, and that way it'll wash off when you're finished. Um, you're gonna need newspaper, plastic tablecloth, or a garbage bag, and that is just to soak up some of the um, dye um, and kind of as to save your uh, space a little bit. Um, I'm gonna be working on our countertops, which actually wipe up pretty easy, but not all things do. I noticed like my metal sink yesterday, I kind of had to scrub it a little bit. Um, I probably would not use anything other than metal. Um, the best thing to do is outside. If it's a pretty day, take the dyeing process outside. You'll, you'll love it. <laughs> it's so much better than doing it inside. Um, you're gonna want a couple old washcloths. You can use an optional cookie drying rack, and that's to lay your um, shirt on when you're squeezing out the dye, or you can just uh, lay it in your sink or lay it on a garbage bag, okay? An optional um, C-Step 13 vinegar or shout color catcher dye, a trapping sheet. So what the vinegar does is after you wash it, um, or after you've dyed your shirt and it's set 24 hours, you can let it um, sit with some vinegar um, for about, uh, I think maybe about 20 minutes, and that kind of helps the color set in before you wash it. Or um, the other item, these are called, and I don't have any, but they're Shout Color Catcher Dye Trapping Sheets, and these are supposed to be amazing. Um, this is per Sue D, which helped me with my dyeing um, technique. She is amazing. She is a uh, quilter, a master quilter, and she also dyes all of her fabric for her quilt. She is amazing, so I want to say thank you, Sue. Um, and Sue did tell me that these were great and that I should get some, and I didn't. <laughs> but they are at Walmart. They do have them at Walmart. Um, and you actually throw those in after your first washing of your shirt. You throw them in on the second and third, and it helps keep the color vibrant. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, if you would like to dye more than one shirt, you'll need a shirt for each person, and then you'll need um, the rip dye that I told you about because you'll only get enough in your kit to do one shirt. So pick up the colors you need and a baggie or a Walmart bag. Um, we'll probably limit these kits to one to two per person. So because we want to kind of share it with everybody in the community. Um, and we know that a lot of us have families where we may want five or six of us doing these shirts. Really, the only thing you would need to buy is the dye and the t-shirts. Everything else is kind of reusable. The bottles are reusable. The soda ash, you can get several shirts out of. You can reuse the gloves. Um, so that's kind of how we start. So I'm going to show you uh, how we get started. All right, the next step that is in our um, instruction guide, we're gonna go with step one and we're gonna put on our apron and our gloves. And you can see I've got my gloves on and I am slipping my apron on right now. And you're gonna see how important it is. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna look at step two. You're gonna fill your sink or a bucket with warm water. Okay, you're gonna do about a gallon of it. And then you're gonna take your soda ash that's this, and you're gonna pour this inside. I've got my water inside my sink. I filled it up with about a gallon of water. And then you're gonna take your soda ash, and you're gonna pour all of this inside of your sink, okay? So you're gonna pour that in. All right, I've actually already done that, so I'm gonna let you do that step. And then after you do that, you will take all of your t-shirts. So if you're gonna be doing a family of five, you may wanna add just a little bit more water to your sink or your bucket, but you're gonna put all the shirts in the soda ash, okay? If you have more than one, go back every few minutes and kind of move them around a little bit, just like a washing machine would do, so all of the shirts uh, capture this soda ash, okay? After it is finished, they're finished, you're gonna take them out and you're going to wring them out, okay? We're on step two. You're gonna wring them out. And step three, um, after they've soaked for 20 minutes. At this point, you can either use them wringed out or you can go to the washing machine on spin cycle only and let them spin the water out. Okay, mine is damp right now um, because it was it was ran through the spin cycle. Um, I almost like them just a little bit wet. I feel like the, um, the dye kind of catches to it a little bit better. Okay, so that was step three. All right, step four is we're gonna um, lay our shirt out smooth and then fold in half. That was the end of step three, okay? So we're gonna go right here. And we're gonna lay our shirt out. 
Okay, we're gonna get it really flat. And I'm gonna fold it actually where the front is what is on top. So I've got it laid out flat and in half. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw our heart on our shirt. So if you've ever uh, made a heart in school or helped your kids make a heart, um, you're drawing a half a heart is what you're doing. And it is really important that the top part of your heart really goes in deep because if you don't, it will kind of look like a circle. So when you start here, okay, you're gonna really go up with it, okay? And you're just gonna do your half circle. Now it depends on how big you want your heart. My shirt that I have on today, my heart is larger than the example ones and I just kind of wanted my heart to be bigger, but that's up to you guys, okay? That's however you all envision seeing your heart. So we've got our heart done, we've got half of it, and we're gonna start with the, um, the grabbing uh, the heart for the tie-dye. And it's almost like you're doing a stitch with your fingers. So you're gonna need your rubber bands, okay? And you're gonna start in the corner of your heart. I'm gonna turn, turn it around here so you guys can see it. And we are on step five right now. Step five actually has three photos on it. But you're gonna start right here in the corner and you're gonna pinch, okay? You're gonna pinch and then you're gonna gather and pinch again. And you're gonna pinch all the way around on the yellow line. Okay, so I'm gathering and pinching and I'm staying on the line. So I'm gonna keep going all the way. And sometimes you have to turn your t-shirt around just a little bit, or I do, to get to the, the other side. I'm still going, stand right on my line. And your line needs to be straight. So when you're ready to tie this off, you don't need part of your yellow here and part of your yellow here. It really needs to be a pretty straight line. So that's just how you gather it up. Just keep that yellow line straight. And you know, it could get off a little bit and that's okay. Um, it's your shirt, so it's okay. You can do whatever you want with it. Okay, so if you can see now, there's my yellow line and I'm gonna take more than one rubber band, okay? I'm gonna take a few in my hand and I'm going to go right over that yellow line with the rubber bands And then I'm going to tie it off and make it tight. Okay, so I'm going to go. You want your rubber bands tight. And you also, if you want white to show in between your colors, um, instead of it just being one color, like you can see how I've got some white showing, um, you want to use a thick rubber band or use more than just two or three. So I'm going to go back and I may put even seven to ten rubber bands on my shirt, okay? So there that is, and you can see they're thick and they're tight. Okay, that's the first one, that's your heart. From there, you pick it up, just pick it straight up, let all of it fall, okay? And you're gonna decide how many rings do you want around your, around your heart. Do you want a heart in just one other color? Do you want a heart in two other colors? Um, on mine, I did three sets of rubber bands, and on each set, um, I went down about two or three inches, And I made it tight again. And like I said, I grabbed several rubber bands because I, I kind of want that line to show the white of the white of the t-shirt is what I mean by the line. Um, and you want to push up next to each other so you don't have like the t-shirt showing in between. You want them really close, okay? And then you're gonna I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna do one more. Alright, right down here. And this side, I might go in from the other side, or I might still go in from this side. Let's see. I will tell you, the smaller the shirt, the easier it is. Um, the larger the shirt, there's just a little bit more fabric to work around. So it makes it um, a little bit harder, but not too hard by any means. Um, you could just knock out two or three 
child shirts a little bit quicker than you can an adult. Okay, so I've wrapped now three sets of rubber bands on my shirt. Okay, and so we are now on, we're on step eight. Um, I'm getting ready to start step nine, and step nine is the messy part. It's where we're going to get our dye out, so we're going to get ready for that, so be ready for dye next. All right, we're back, and our next step is the dyeing process. So I have my pink bottle and my red bottle, and I am going to fill those up with, you know, cool to warm water. Kind of let it go in there slow because it, it will overflow. And you want to get as much out of it as you can. And so um, after you fill it up, you are going to want to shake it really good. Okay, get all that dye that's in the bottom mixed out of the bottom. Okay, and I'm going to do my pink dye. And like I said, you can you can grab different colors if you want to of the red dye. It does come in powder and liquid. Um, I don't think I told you that. So you can actually get either. Um, and you may not even want to go with red or pink. And you may not even want to do a heart. I have some examples on the um, on the guide of uh, other designs that you can do with your um, with your tie dye. And I'm seeing that in the bottom of mine, I don't, you can see all the dye is not out of that. And the trick I should have done was put a little bit of water in here first, tiny amount, shook that up real good, and then finished filling it up all the way. And I know to do that, and I did not. <laughs> so now I'm gonna have to beat it here just a little bit <laughs> to get the, uh, the dye mixed up. Okay. All right, so you're gonna decide your pattern. If you want your heart to be in the center, I have a drying rack, but it's not a complete drying rack, so I have it propped up on two cups. You can also lay like a garbage bag in your sink and do it right on top of a Walmart bag or garbage bag. Um, I want the red to be in the center, so that's the very first part we did. So that's where I'm gonna start with my red dye, okay? You can see how that is really bright. And you can also use your fingers to push it around in there. And that helps get in some of the little crevices. And it also saves some of your dye if you kind of push it around a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna skip one because this one's gonna be pink and I'm gonna go to the next one. And I'm gonna add red on the next one. squeeze that on a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and flip it over while I've got my red out and do the other side with red. Make sure you're matching up the front and back or you may decide not to. You may want them to be different um, and that is awesome too. Okay so I'm kind of getting in these little crevices. And if you can tell if you look inside there, there's still a lot of white. Um, so you may want yours completely red or you may want some of that white showing through in your heart. And really this is just an experiment. Um, you might do one and decide you want to do a second one completely different. I'm gonna stop on the red for just a second and I'm gonna move to the pink. Now, if you have like a yellow and a red, you're not gonna wanna just reach your hand from the red to the pink and touch the shirt because it's gonna change your color. These are pretty close to the same color so I can do that. But um, if you have really different colors, wipe your hands off really good with um, your gloves before switching colors and touching the, touching the shirt. Okay, 
Now my last spot, which will take the most dye, is the, will be the bottom of my shirt, okay? So I'm gonna start covering that. Go ahead and flip it over and get a little on the back. Now you might like kind of the splattered look on the bottom of your shirt. If you kind of like it to look random and splattered, you could actually stop here and it would be really cool. Um, or you can continue on coloring with your uh, pink dye. And what you could do here is if you run out of pink, and I've probably got half a bottle left, but um, if you run out and you've got some red left, just go back and add some red to the bottom. And I think that would be really pretty too. You can still see I've got quite a bit to cover. So these bottles really will only do one shirt. Um, you, you might could do two kids if they're small. Um, but they're really made to do, to do one shirt. Okay, and you'll, you'll just keep covering. You, you use your dyes until your dyes um, are all used up. I would, I would color, myself I'm covering the whole bottom pink. And then I would go back on the red, pink, and red and make sure that I did not leave anything not covered, okay? And when you get this finished, um, I'm gonna stop right there and not continue with the, with the dye just for time. You're gonna open up your baggie and you want to be careful to not let the red touch the pink. So you may need a helper. You want to put one side in and then you're gonna slide and kind of turn the other side in. And then you're gonna zip lock that up. And you can see they're not touching. Okay, this can also be done in like a Walmart or Kroger bag. And you're gonna leave this in there for 24 hours, not one not two. As tempting as it is, try your best to leave it in there for 24 hours, okay? And then after 24 hours, you are going to open up your shirt. So here's one that I did yesterday. So it has been 24 hours and it is I'm taking it out of the bag. You will definitely want your gloves back on for this and you will want your apron on because we're gonna start rinsing. And it's really important to rinse well, okay? So we're on step 12 now where we talk about rinsing. You're gonna rinse it with, um, you're gonna rinse it with the rubber bands off really on really well and then take it off and rinse it uh, with it off. But you wanna to try to get as much dye as you can out of it. If you'll notice on this one, I was talking yesterday and I got my pattern off. It was supposed to be red, pink, red, pink, but it's actually red, pink, pink, red. So we'll see how that turns out. I have found that the pink fades more than the red does, okay? So I'm going to um, turn on the water and start rinsing. I'm gonna kind of show you how long you have to rinse, um, but it, it, it's quite a while. Um, one thing you can do is start with your light colors and rinse those first. So my two pinks are right together. So I'm gonna rinse them really well. And I, this is like a five, 10 minute process of getting the, the dye out. So you're gonna rinse and then we're gonna take the rubber bands off and we're gonna rinse some more, okay? So I'm gonna stop the video for a second, let you rinse here, and then we'll come back and uh, take the rubber bands off. Okay, we're back and you should have rinsed off a lot of the color. Uh, with the rubber bands on. And the reason we do that is once we take the rubber bands off and we start rinsing, the colors can uh, bleed together. Um, to me, this is this is the most exciting part. You're gonna take your rubber bands off. Um, you can save them and reuse them for another shirt. Um, it takes just a little bit to get them off because I put so many on here. <laughs> and you'll be able to see that the, uh, the pink dye did fade um, more than the red did. And it's a workout a little bit, getting the rubber bands off. You, you can cut them off if you don't plan on reusing them again, but um, I know most people probably have more than one shirt they'd like to do. Or um, Another awesome thing to do is you can do socks, um, you can do bandanas, you can do 
uh, ball caps. Um, there's other ways to dye than with just a bottle. You can use a spray bottle. Um, you can use bleach. If you have a black t-shirt, you can tie dye with bleach. And then you can actually go back over that with a color. Okay, most exciting part is when you open your shirt up and you get to see what it looks like. I'm gonna see. Oh, mine looks like an angel. You can see that I have I have wings and I have a head, so mine is not exactly a heart, but that is okay. I actually love it. Um, I'm not sure what I did there with the pleating and puckering, but I did something to to make it uh, turn just a little bit different. And you can see the colors where I did the two colors next to each other. It's a little bit different. Okay, from this point you're gonna rinse it some more. Okay, so rinse for another five minutes or so. And from there, I'm gonna tell you what you can do next. It can go straight into the washing machine, or we can do a couple things uh, to help the colors stay in a little bit longer. I'll just tell you what you can do with those. All right, we got our shirt out. And as you can see, Mine's a little crazy, but I actually love it. Um, what you can do from this point is you can go ahead and put it right in the washing machine. Um, I washed it the first time just with hot water. And then the next two times I use Dawn or you can use a really mild detergent, um, hot water all three times. And then the last time you will need to take it out, run the washing machine all by itself with nothing in it with some detergent in there to make sure you get all the dye out. There are a couple ways to preserve the color. Um, you can see mine is a little deeper than these right here. Um, if, now, you may love the way that these, these started out much deeper um, and they faded kind of into a light pink and you may love that. If you love that look, don't do anything. Just go directly with washing them in the washing machine. If you want to keep some of the color and have it a little bit more vibrant, you can soak your t-shirt in vinegar and warm water for 30 minutes before washing, and then, then go ahead and put it in the washing machine. Uh, do it once with just water, and then the next two times with just Dawn or mild detergent, hot water. Or you can add the Shout Color Catcher dye trapping sheets that you can get at Walmart. The first time, wash it by itself in the washer, and then the next two times, add the, uh, the trapper dryer sheets, and that helps uh, preserve the color. And then when you're finished, you'll just throw it in the dryer and you'll have an awesome t-shirt for Valentine's Day. So I'm so excited. One thing to do is share your photos. If you get some awesome t-shirts, send them to us through our Facebook Messenger and you can win an awesome art prize. And if you just love tie-dyeing, on the very back page, there are some other ways to tie-dye. So when you go buy your dye, if you're gonna do more than one, you may get three or four colors. Um, you may just make a lot, make a lot of different uh, tie-dye t-shirts. And send us those too. We wanna see your, your um, great masterpieces. So I hope you've enjoyed this tie-dyeing session today. Um, we'll have more uh, take-home art packets coming up. And then we're also gonna have some new some new things here at the Art Center. We're gonna have some demos uh, by some professional artists and photographers um, and a photography contest. So we've got some really neat things coming up. So just be watching us on Facebook. We'll also have advertisements um, and the newspaper and the community events of what we've got going on. So we're just so glad you joined us today and you guys have an awesome day.